What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I've got a box. You know what that means, another Tackle Warehouse unboxing. I've had this stuff for like a month and a half and I never got around to doing the unboxing, so I figured now would be a perfect time. I know a lot of you, unfortunately, are stuck inside. Your lakes and stuff are shut down. It stinks, I hear you. But, you know, we're all going to get through this together. And something I wanted to point out, I had one of my good subscribed Fish and Friends say last video that they thought I was taking the quarantine lightly. Man, that couldn't be any farther from the truth. Um, I've got somebody very close to me who works in the hospital, and it's trying. It's unnerving, you know, anxious times. I work in the financial industry, and my job has been completely flipped upside down with the markets and everything going on. So uh, if any of you took it that way, certainly not the case. I have nothing but the utmost respect for, you know, the grocery people, people delivering boxes, UPS, uh, nurses, doctors, everybody out there, you know, that's essential right now, keeping the world going. I have nothing but the utmost respect. So if any of you thought that about the last video, wipe that out of your mind. I think you all know me a little bit better than that. So tonight we're going to talk about some stuff. But before I get into this stuff, I have a couple things that I'm going to do here because it's easier. Starting with the reel. That is the Lose Mock Smash Reel. Now I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail on this because I'm going to be doing an a in-depth review on this pretty soon, but I've had a lot of people ask me about this. Debo, is that the new Smash Reel? It is. I had about 18 million different people ask me about this one. If I could get it, if I could review it, I'd be happy to. I picked one up and so far I'm pretty darn happy with it. Um, the biggest thing is this will bomb a lure. I've been throwing the lipless on there. Uh, I put some 14, I believe this is 14 pound uh, Yozuri top knot on it, and it's been kicking us out there really far. So that's the one thing I've been really surprised with. Um, I didn't know what the casting distance would be like, but it will definitely whip a lure out there. So that is the Lou's Mock Smash. More to come on that soon, but that was one of my recent purchases. Also in that purchase, I got this, a new combo. That is the Luz Super Duty 300 reel. So it's a larger size reel. The 300 mean it's got a larger spool capacity, larger size, a little bit bigger reel and all. I've got 85 pound braid on here. So the bigger that line is, the bigger diameter. If you're using a small low profile reel, you're not gonna be able to get as much line on there. So that's where a larger reel like this really comes in handy when you're using those bigger, larger diameter lines. And one thing that I noticed is they did change up those wind grips a little bit. They're a little bit smaller than the previous version. I love these. These probably are my favorite grips out of any of the things that I have out there. I really like those new uh, Lou's wind grips. Again, I'm not going to go super in detail on the reel. I like it so far. I have got to test it just a little bit, but I'll be doing very in-depth, thorough review on this after I get to use it and test it out some more. Also, I picked up this. This happens to be the brand new swim bait rod that Phoenix put out. Now, again, I'll be doing an in-depth review on this, but... Uh, I got this to have a couple different options. I've got the Dobbins Fury, the 8-foot swim bait. I think it's rated for lures up to uh, 1 to 8 ounces, so up to 8 ounces. This one actually is a little bit stiffer, and it's rated for lures up to 6 ounces. I noticed in the tip of it, when you shake it, you can't really see it here, but it's a stiffer rod overall. So I wanted to have a couple different options for swim baits. Um, I opted to get this one. I mean, the handle on it, everything is completely beautiful. It's got like a iridescent purpley green look to it. The handle's a little bit different. Um, it's kind of slick back here. Maybe that's the only thing I'd change is something back here to grip, but I mean, overall the rod is beautiful. And again, I'll be going in depth uh, with this after I've used it a little bit more, but I wanted to get those out of the way because I can't really do them on the desk over there. So those are the reels. That's the rod. I got a, cu a couple other rods uh, just after this. We'll go over those soon as well, but enough of this stuff. Let's look in the box and check out all those lures. All right, where should we start? In the box, let's go with this little dude first. A Vike Tungsten Rubber Jig. This is actually a chatterbait. Let's take it out here. I only had like two of these left. I'm lucky I even got one. I just wanted to try it out. I've never used a tungsten headed vibrating jig like this. Looks pretty cool. The uh, The head's a little bit pointier. And when you see when I compared these to some of the others, this head is really small. Uh, you know, that tungsten, it's a much denser material. So you can get, you know, something the same size compared to lead. Uh, and tungsten is going to be much smaller, so that's one of the big advantages of tungsten. It's got the black rubber skirt, the blade there, nothing too crazy or different, kind of just your standard blade. Now, it is one of those put together by the split ring. I know some people don't like that. They want it to be directly connected, you know, like a Z-Man chatterbait, but same there, the snap. Uh, overall, it's a pretty normal-looking chatterbait, but I have never used one with a tungsten head like that. Figure why not? Let's get it and try it. Let's see how it does. If I notice a big difference or anything, I like how the head is kind of like arrow shaped like that. It seems like it should go over wooden stuff, maybe a little better. You can see when I hold it there, all that should go right over things. But thought why not? Let's try it. I like the black color. Uh, there we go. 
Now, sticking with some other bladed jigs that people said I had to try, I finally got some. These are the Picasso shock blades. I've never used these. Had a number of people say, Debo, you got to pick one up. They're pretty awesome. Now, one thing, that gentleman right there, Mr. Aaron Martins, I just heard, I think Monday maybe it was, or Tuesday, uh, he had to have brain surgery. So, thoughts out to him and his family. Uh, they found, I think, like a tumor in there. He had some lesions. He collapsed when he was fishing. So, Dude's an absolute beast with the drop shot. He's fun to watch. He's an amazing angler. So hopefully he gets well soon and is back out before we know it and catching some fish. Well, let's take a look at this guy. The Picasso Lures Shock Blade. Ouch. That hook is very good and sharp. Now you can see here, look at the difference. These are both 3 8 ounce. Look at the difference in head size there. Look at that Picasso blade, that 3 8 ounce lead versus 3 8 ounce tungsten. Much smaller. I notice with this one, it's got the little holes there in the chatterbait. I don't know if that makes bubbles or makes a different sound, does it say? That's interesting. I know that's one thing that some people say they have troubles with with the chatterbait. It's designed to stay down and not lift up. Create hunting action at a slow retrieve. Vibration, double bait keeper. We'll take a look at that. Strong hook. The hook is very strong. Good, strong wire. Extremely sharp on there. I like that. So that right there is what they're referring to as the double bait keeper. So just kind of the one regular lead bait keeper here on a lot of things. And it's also got a little wire turned backwards there to help hold it on. So two different spots to help hold the plastic on there. I guess we'll see how that does. Skirt's kind of, you know, your normal rubbery skirt. The head of it looks good. Yeah, I mean, overall, it looks like a good bladed jig. I'm excited to throw that. What color was that? I don't know, white or something. White shock blade, gold lip there. I'm excited. Now, ooh, that's interesting. So the way the blade connects to the head there, I've never seen that. Now, hopefully that doesn't end up flipping around and falling off. But you can see, instead of using like a split earring or instead of going directly to the actual lure like a Z-Man, they have like a little U-shaped deal there that kind of loops around. That's interesting. I wonder how much more movement or whatever. I don't know. We'll see. It's supposed to stay down more, so we'll see if that does happen. I usually don't have a trouble with my... Uh, my Z-Man's rising up, but I know some people do. We'll give that a try. Picasso shock blade. I got white. I also got red. I want to try throwing a red chatterbait. I've never thrown one. I noticed they had a beautiful red color. And again, it's on there like some kid's toy stuck on that. But that's what that color looks like there. Beautiful color, red and some orange on it. You know, that red orange head. I was going to get like a jackhammer. I know that was all the rage. People said, oh, they're all sold out. I'm like, oh, I'll get one just to try it. What the heck? No, they really are all sold out. So, got one of those red Picassos. Also grabbed a sexy shad color. That is killer on my local lake. Figured I might as well take it out and give you a look. Kind of a black nickel blade there. Beautiful bright colors on it. That chartreuse sexy shad. I think that one will do really well. I've had a lot of luck on that around here. And muddy water. And then again, I grabbed another white one. I got two of those. They were pretty low on all these. So, grab those. Okay, next up, sticking with that theme, before I only had one of these, I had one Thunder Cricket, just one to try out. Uh, these were on sale a month and a half ago whenever I bought them. Uh, I think whatever that sale was, 15 or 20% off. So I grabbed a few different colors. I figured, why the heck not? I want to try some more. Looking to see what color this was, I don't know. This was kind of like a reddish, brownish craw. I do have the black and red one. All those were sold out, and that's the only color one of these that I've used. I like it. I like the Thunder Cricket a lot. Oh. I don't like that though. I just took it out of the package in front of y'all and the head's already chipped. That's no bueno. Well, I bet it'll still definitely catch fish. It's going to get all marred up and beat up anyway because I like to run mine against the rocks. Hooks on these I noticed are like absolute razor sharp. I mean, they just are sticky tacky. Um, the blade and head moves well. That was one thing I noticed that's different on this. You can see the actual wire deal. It's like an S ring or an S loop thing. I don't know what you call it inside the actual jig head so you can see it moves there the blade is fixed right to that wire there's no split rings or anything so that was one thing different i noticed about the uh, the thunder cricket that's different than everyone else is how they fix that blade to the head open this one up this is a, a green pumpkin i think black and blue i forget what they call it green pumpkin blue you can see there black and blue head black and blue blade then it's got like a green pumpkin with blue and blue on the bottom. So almost like an Okeechobee craw type looking deal. Green pumpkin with blue. Um, our craws around here have blue on them. So that's why I went with this. That green pumpkin blue I think will imitate those. Bounce this off some rocks. I think I can have some good success. Got a couple in that color. Grabbed one black and blue. Of course, black and blue does well around here again with our craws being that color. And then white. White is like a great universal color. Come in McShad, crappie, um, you know, white bass, hybrid bass. All kinds of stuff with a white lure. All sorts of bait fish are white with that kind of silvery color flash on it. So I grabbed one of those as well. I want to test these more. I do like the Thunder Cricket. 
Um, everything held up on the other one. I had some good luck with it last year. So we shall see how all these do. I like those colors. Comment below and let me know which one you like the best. Man, I tell you, I'm kind of partial to that one, that, that green pumpkin with blue. We'll see how those do. Strike King, Thunder Crickets. All right, moving on to the only line that I got. This is the Suffix Advance. I got some 17 pound, supposed to be a little bit smaller diameter, 0 0.15, 0 0.38 millimeter. That's easier to say. Kind of a smaller line. I wanted to try this. Uh, I know there's been a couple people that have said that it's amazing. A couple people asked me about it, said they've never used it and they haven't heard of it. I want to try it. It's supposed to be a good manageable fluorocarbon. That's one question that I get asked all the time. What's a good manageable fluorocarbon that won't break the bank? Now, this is a little bit more expensive. I usually don't spend a crazy ton amount online. Um, Seaguar Red Label, it does have a little bit of uh, memory to it, but I think it's probably the best budget fluorocarbon out there. I'm also trying out the Yozuri Top Knot, and that has been really good too. So I want to try something like this. A little bit more expensive. Let's see how big of a difference I notice between something like this and more of a, a budget fluorocarbon. So that's the Suffix Advance. I went with the 17 pound. I figured that's an all around good size to use. I'm gonna put this on one of my reels and I'll let you know how I uh, like that stuff. Let's start with the soft plastics. Now it's funny because I got this order a month and a half ago. So this was before MLF. One thing that I remember back in the day guys throwing was the methylate worm, this crazy obnoxious orangish pinkish toxic looking disgusting worm it doesn't look like anything in nature you're not going to find it anywhere but it's loud it's annoying and right now pre-spawn even going up into spawn i know people use it one because it's bright and they can bed fish with it but it's something that fish that you know aren't even bedding will come up and eat now i remember the guys back in the day you know lures kind of go in cycles oh this lure was big and popular for a while then it kind of falls off this is old school. I remember guys throwing this back in the day. And if you watch the MLF, uh, whichever that last one was before everything kind of got crazy and they shut fishing down, Mark Daniels was killing it on the methylate worm. So I thought that was kind of funny that I picked this one up, wanted to try it. There are still guys out on the tour using this. Uh, just rigging this baby, you know, a little Texas rig. I'm just going to put a light uh, hook on the front of it, throw this on a spinning rod, weightless, and kind of work it like a jerk bait. So pop, 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 and it'll kind of do like a crazy ch -ch -ch and then you just, it slowly sinks and then work it, kill it. So I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try those. Uh, I remember people throwing it way back in the day. I was never a big fan, I never used them. You know, I just, I didn't know anything about it. To me, it just looked absurd and crazy. So I was like, you know, is this a gimmick? What's the deal? But no, um, you know, when I was little, I probably should have thrown it, but they do catch fish. You know, seeing him, I thought that was kind of funny timing that I already picked up some of these, so. We're gonna try that. I know bubble gum's another color. I've got some of those. I was gonna throw it last year. Uh, I never got around to it. I think I tried it once, it didn't catch anything, but we're gonna throw those, see if an obnoxiously loud, crazy color, it's almost the color of the front of the Zoom package. See if that catches any fish. That's the Zoom Trick Worm, the original, Methylate. I got a couple of these. I hadn't seen these. Talking about old school, I honestly didn't know Mans was still doing anything. Um, one of my top three favorite brands back in the day when I was younger, love the man stuff, the jelly worms, those kind of, uh, shovel tail worms that they had. I saw they had a new bait out, so I figured, you know what? I owe it to them. I used to love the man stuff. This is the man's jelly bug. Now I suppose you could use this as like a, a Ned rig bait on a shaky head. I figured even wacky rigged drop shotting it. I don't know. I honestly don't know what it's hundred percent meant for but I can see it working in a lot of different situations. The man's, oh yeah, they always have kind of that sweet, fruity, licorice-y smell to it. What does that is that even say on here? Super soft and fruit scented. It always did. Man's smelled the best. Oh yeah, back in the day I always smelled good, but I got some uh, black and blue flake there, and then I also got this color. I don't, honestly don't know how I'm gonna fish these. I think kind of on a Ned Rig. Ooh, this one's really greasy, mm, but it smells good. That's green pumpkin purple. Those two compared side by side, you can see in there that purplish, orangish, almost looking flake inside there, then the black with the blue flake. I don't know, how would you all use these? Kind of a cool looking little thing, man stuff. I honestly didn't know they were still making things. Had to get those to try them. Again, that's the 3.75 inch jelly bug. 15 of them in there. Hopefully I can catch something on one of those. Okay, continuing on with the soft plastics. These are something that I, Saw come out a while back and they had some new colors. This color was actually the whole reason why I bought these. These are the Strike King, a game hog. Those are the four inch. 
So that color right there is Tequila Sunrise with an orange flake in it. So that back is black. The bottom is like that maroony, purplish, iridescent blue color. When I was younger, we had a good friend, Joe. He's since passed away. He was a really good dude, good friend of my dad's, and we fished quite a bit together. Um, but he swore, absolutely swore by the Tequila Sunrise worm. He got me and my dad hooked on him, and that's pretty much what we threw exclusively uh, back in the day, those hot summer days, you know, along all those trees and wood and stuff. We'd throw one of these at Tequila Sunrise worm, and around here it seemed to do amazing. So I wanted to get this. Um, back when we threw them, it didn't have the orange flake. Didn't have that orange flake in it, but I figured, you know what, that looks close enough. I like the game hog. I like how it's got the little deals here that are going to move. Little deals in back almost reminds you of a brush hog. Um, but I like it. I like the profile of it. We'll see how those do. And these, oh, the best smelling plastics out there. That coffee scent on these, I absolutely love that. Oh yeah, with coffee scent and salt. In my opinion, the best smelling plastics on the market. Now whether or not the fish like that, I don't know. But I would rather have this stuff on my hands than some of that dead seafood smelling stuff. Also got some watermelon red. It's got the red flakes and the black flake in there. Very good producer. And the very boring but my favorite green pumpkin with the black flake in it. Probably my all around favorite color in anything is just a green pumpkin black flake. So we'll see how those do. The game hogs, all those I got were in four inch. Gonna put that on a little text rig, see how it does. Got a couple pieces of terminal tackle and a couple one lure left in there. So I grabbed some Nico hooks. The Nico rig is something that I really wanna focus on and use more this year. I got some one knot. It's a pretty good size I figure for using on, you know, your this, for example, a standard trick worm. Got some other things I want to try Nico rigging. And I got some of these, whoa, some of these, the little Nico weights. You can see here, it's kind of like a mushroom style head weight there. And it's got some little grippers. You just take that, stick that in the bait, and that's going to be your weight. So I got some of these to try out, 8th, 16th, and 132nd. Some Nico weights on there, but I want to try that more this year. I know a lot of people like it. I haven't put a bunch of time in with it. So grab some hooks. And then I want to keep working the drop shot game. These were interesting. These were split slash drop shot, but they're weedless. Um, I've been using the hooks that are more like a worm hook instead of these kind of octopus type. Just because these, they weren't weedless and they tend to get hung up and stuck a lot. So I saw with this weedless kind, I don't know how big of a difference it'll make. I should have got a little bit size bigger, probably a, a one-aught, but I got size two and one. These are pretty small. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have got a little bit bigger, but... I'm going to try those. One of my struggles with the drop shot is getting hung up, so I'm going to try that. All right, last in the box, the final two things are some top waters. Now, these are made by River to Sea, so the same company that makes the Whopper Plopper, as you can see there. That's the I Know It color, one of my favorite colors in the plopper. This is the Chris Lane Lane Changer, so it's almost half an ounce, six inches long. It's kind of a, a, a prop slash pull bait. I suppose you could probably cast it out and just retrieve it like a Whopper Plopper, but... This is meant to be kind of popped, almost like a devil horse. You can see there, whew, I almost put that right in my finger. That was dumb. Meant to do that. You can see there it's got the little deals there that turn, little blades. So as you throw this out, cast it out on the water and you use short little jerks of your rod, almost like you're doing a jerk bait. These are gonna spin and spit and, and look like a bait fish running. So thought this was different, a little bit different look. You know, if uh, you know they're not chasing something moving, Something like this where it spits and spurts and then kind of stalls for a second. Sometime that stalling action is the big deal. Now you could say, well, you could do the same thing with a Whopper Popper Debo. Why'd you get this thing? Well, I don't know. I like to try new stuff. They're kind of cool. And I thought the same thing about the Whopper Popper for a long time. Well, that's a gimmick. That looks stupid. That's not going to catch fish. I couldn't have been more wrong. It's one of my favorite topwater lures now, the old Whopper Popper. So going to try these. I like that color. Also got the loon color. Uh, I like to have like one light top water and one dark top water. So a black or a loon color like this and then a white uh, bone is another good color in the river to see stuff. Kind of that yellowish white. But I don't know. We'll see how these do plopping along. I got a couple uh, of these from Rapala. Uh, I don't remember what they're called, but kind of the same thing. They got these little deals where you rip them and use short pops of the rod to kind of make the water and stuff spit. So that again is the Chris Lane. That's him there. Handsome devil, isn't he? The Chris Lane Lane Changer. We'll see how this dude does. All right, fish and friends, that's going to do it for tonight. Comment below and let me know which lure out of all those you're most excited to see. Is it some more Thunder Cricket action? Is it that weird topwater thing? The Merthiolate crazy orange red looking worm thing? That time's coming up, I can throw that. So comment below and let me know what you want to see the most. Now tonight's subscribe fish and friends shout out goes to my man Pastafino. He's from across the lake. I know he's been impacted by the, the COVID thing. 
Uh, so people in his family, I'm certainly keeping my thoughts out to you, man. Hope you're still watching the channel. Hope you're still supporting me. It would mean a lot to me. And everybody else out there that watches, thank you all for watching and supporting me. Hopefully these, these videos can kind of give you a little bit of taste of normal in these not so normal times. I know it's crazy and different, but I appreciate everyone out there who watches. So stay safe. Thank you all for watching. Until next time.